What's up, everybody? It's Brandon from Box Office Banner and Cult Flick Symposium, and I am back with yet another movie review. Today, I will review A Good Person, which for some reason is such a simple title, but I keep wanting to fuck it up for the life of me. Even when I went up to the counter at the movie theater, I almost said A Good Girl. I was like, a good, a good, it's, it's good something, good, good garden state. I'm like going back in time. Yeah, I don't, I can't, for the life of me, I cannot say this title, and it's so damn simple. A good girl? A good person. Yes, I saw a good person. I was going to see this last Friday, but John Wick 4 came out, and priorities, people, yeah. Uh, not even just that. I wanted to see this movie just as much, really. I'm a huge Florence Pugh fan, if you know me. Trailer looked really endearing, sad, and tragic, yes, yet hopeful. It kind of had that vibe going on. And uh, I just really, you know, it's my type of movie at the end of the day. Like, I love to shoot them up, but I also love the sad, sappy, dramatic shit. So I didn't really have a dog in the fight on the one I wanted to see the most. I think I would still choose John Wick, but I would have had no problem going to see this one and pushing John Wick back for a couple days. But the problem is, everybody else I was with is definitely going to see John Wick. And the problem is, I also was completely content with that. And the problem is, it was not showing at the theater I normally go to. So I had to lonesome my ass on down to the movie theater by myself. Mind you, the first time I've seen a movie by myself in a long time. At like my backup theater, because it's not showing at any of the two main theaters I go to. And watch it by myself. Left work early for it. So here we go. Without further ado, a good girl, is it? A good person. Um, this movie did not disappoint. I'm seeing mixed reviews from critics. Seems like audience scores and shit. Pretty solid. Um, the movie is exactly what the trailer depicted it to be. It was all that. I don't know about more, but it was, it was exactly what I was expecting, which is not bad because... You know, sometimes things don't have to overachieve when you already think they can be downright pretty fucking awesome. Um, Morgan Freeman in the movie Daniel. Um, come on, dude. He steals the fucking show. If you don't know anything about this movie, because it's a little, I guess, lesser known, it's not as mainstream. Florence Pugh's character of Allison is marrying um, Morgan Freeman, whose name in the movie is Daniel, his son. And when she is going, I believe they're going to look at like a wedding dress even. I think that's what they say later in the movie. I actually missed like the first five minutes of the movie because the line was forever. And again, I left work early. So I was getting in there like on the cusp of like, come on, get my ticket, get my ticket. But I believe they're going to look for wedding dresses with uh, her hu Florence Pugh's soon to be husband's sister and her husband. And Florence Pugh looks at her phone for a split second on maps and wrecks. And when she wakes up, she realizes that she lived, but she killed her soon-to-be husband's sister and her soon-to-be husband's sister's husband. So now you were left in the aftermath of dealing with that tragedy and loss from the husband's point of view, not so much, more of actually Morgan Freeman's point of view. And that is because while we're dealing with Florence Pugh's trauma through addiction and feeling guilty and not admitting if she's guilty and not facing the consequences that happened. She stumbled upon Daniel Morgan Freeman's character by going to AA and they form a friendship and kind of, you know, just like he forms a bond with her in a way of just, it shows you that like you could potentially move on. Things can get better through tragedy. And this movie depicts that very well. I only think there's maybe one scene in the whole movie, which is actually near the end, that felt very, for me, because we've seen these types of movies so many times, it felt very, like the script and everything in it is not magical, it's not amazing, but it's passable and it's elevated. You know, there's not bad performances in the movie, but Florence Pugh and Morgan Freeman just skyrocket this movie. They fucking make it all that and then some. They take a good movie and make it downright amazing is basically how I feel about it. And like I was getting at, there's only really one scene in the whole movie, though, I will give it this, that feels really like cliche and like Hollywood and like by the book. There's something that happens kind of in the final act-ish that like, I feel like maybe it was just rushed. Like it didn't feel authentic like the rest of the movie. Like the way it flowed when it, you know, you hit that like, 
I guess just the backs to the wall breaking point type of scene in a movie where everybody, it seems like every movie, every show has to have that moment where everybody gets mad at each other, where it's just like, I know we've been picking each other up the whole movie, but let's tear each other down. That type of scene or like a scene in, in anything else where like, say it's like two brothers that are like best friends and they're rebuilding a relationship and then they have the big fallout in the middle of the movie and they got to make their way back together. There's always that scene in these type of movies. I think that scene, for whatever reason, maybe it was the way it was directed by Zach Braff, it just did not execute properly. It wasn't bad, but it felt like, oh, okay, this is kind of taken away from the authenticity of what I felt in the rest of the movie that was carried by Morgan Freeman and Florence Pugh. But other than that, they knocked it out of the park. I think this is exactly what you want from a drama. Florence Pugh continues to just impress with like, her crying in this movie. Now, there's not really, like, I don't think there's that overall, like, wrecking ball type sad moment in this movie, but there's plenty of moments where you feel yourself, you know, like, you're not crying, but you are welling up, and you're watching Florence Pugh have a sad moment, and watching her deal with her struggles, because it's not really about just, like, you know, it wasn't her sister that died, it's on the other end of that, and just watching that person because like of course that person you're like why are you why are you sad you didn't lose a sister you're the one that walked out of the car you got to live you're that and these are not spoilers people it's all in the trailer it's the whole story around the story of the movie but like we forget like the guilt and the you know at the end of the day what's the title called like a good person even though she made this terrible mistake that was like split second and even then it wasn't anything insane it's not like she was doing drugs then it was just looking at her phone that if she wasn't doing that and she could face those consequences after that she could really see for herself that like yeah she could have done something different but it's also not her fault because she isn't a bad person and the way she depicts that shows that and the way the movie represents that and gives her this canvas to paint that all over as she slowly finds herself through that is actually very beautiful morgan freeman as just you know you just you feel it and everything he does in the movie like you can sense there's some type of past there like it's not all the way there like he's got this rocky background that he has not forgiven himself for which makes him the perfect counterpart for Florence Pugh who's currently going through that and the way they peel that back as the movie goes on is very well done I think and like I said Morgan Freeman just runs with it and watching Florence Pugh go to just straight just attic mode pretty much it seems harmless at first and then in the blink of an eye it turns on its head and you're just like, good God, like I hate to see her go through this. Cause you, you almost, cause actors and actresses like that, you, they take you into the movie where you feel like you know them like personally almost. And you feel terrible for her cause you know that she's better than that and you want her to be better than that. And she executes that perfectly through the character as she slowly, but surely yanks herself out of that. But it's not always just, a road paved with gold. Like as soon as it seems like it's going one direction, it might get reeled right back in because it's not always like I complained about the one part of the movie that I won't reveal kind of felt a little too cliche to Hollywood. It does have road that while it seems like it's paved with gold for a second, it quickly gets gravelly and quickly can go right back into the shadows, which is what can really happen to somebody that is an addict. And then the other characters in the movie, I'll talk about them for a little bit. Molly Shannon. She would probably be my third favorite character in the movie. She plays Florence Pugh's mom. She's really good in the movie from the standpoint of like, there's a couple scenes where she kind of gets dramatic and I'm not really feeling it. You know, like I'm looking at her like, I'm not that person. I don't put comedians in a box. But watching her go into dramatic mode, especially going up against like two juggernauts it feels like in pew and fucking freeman it it doesn't really work for me that much but when she's not into overly dramatic mode and she's like friendly mother that just like she's gonna make moves to try to help her daughter but at the end of the day when her back's against the wall she will break and bend for her daughter because she feels like she's more of a friend than her mother a lot of the time, but her heart's in the right place. Like she's trying to be that mother. Like, I think she does a whole lot 
without even having to do a lot in this movie. So overall, I did really like her performance, aside from the few dramatic parts where I think she was just overshadowed by way better actors. And then um, the guy that was going to be her husband, I thought he was going to be in the movie more, but I could have done away with him. I like, I mean, he wasn't bad, but like not really memorable at all. And I think that's why he wasn't in it as much. It was more of like the idea of him than the actual actor within the movie. And then um, the daughter, which is another sad part of this story to uh, the mom and the dad that died, um, which of course is uh, Florence Pugh's soon to be husband, sister's daughter. Like she, she was really good. There was a lot of moments where I thought she was just downright great, but I think she also got overshadowed. But as a child actor, she's more than serviceable. I mean, she's not like child, child actor, you know, like little kid, but she's still not quite an adult adult. <laughs> so like she, she did good for like her age group that you see in these type of films. But again, I think she's overshadowed. And that is the main thing I can say about this movie. Like if you really like the actors that are Morgan Freeman and Florence Pugh, actors, actress, you will like this movie. I don't see any way you don't because they are so entertaining, they're so fun, and they're so endearing and sad and everything else you could imagine in a movie like this. This movie really, again, didn't blow me away because I had a feeling it was going to go like this, but it did exactly what I wanted to, which is I wanted this to be like a 9 out of 10 movie, and I think that's what it was. If you're into, you know dramas sometimes dramedies this is a very not funny but it's, although it's funny at time but like it's a very like funny way of looking at what you know a drama can be at times because sometimes it's almost too serious or sometimes they don't know how to really like balance the comedy with the drama it'll take you out of it but they really pull it off because at the end of the day this movie as a drama knocks it out of the park, and it's a great way of looking at how in life you're just never done. It's an endearing, fun, yet sad, really complex in the ways of looking at like human beings and how fragile we can be. And on top of that, just a sign of hope that like no matter what you've done, you can always come back with your best foot in the right direction. And even though it's not necessarily a bow on top, you know, which I love that, it really shows you how crazy complicated this life can be, but yet there's so much beauty in that. And I think this movie does a great job of doing that, or maybe I should say good job, and the performances by the two leads are what really elevates that into a great job. So definitely go check this movie out. This was a good time for me. I had a great time sitting damn near front row, just lounged out in my recliner like, man, I miss doing this. I miss seeing these movies by myself every once in a while. I really took it in. Felt a little more personal. Yeah, but uh, definitely check this movie out if that's your thing. I don't think you'll regret it. Peep it. Love you guys.